What's up, nigga? And crackers? This is Jaron Benson. And when I'm not being a fucking racist, I'm tuning in to hot new hip hop. Fuck with us. Slow motion, the EP, volume one. Yes. It's out right now, man. If you support great music. Go to fucking iTunes. Go to Google Play. Support great music. You will enjoy it. It will be the best 34 minutes of your fucking life. I'm going to do two volumes. Um, slow Motion is, is actually dedicated to one of my homies, man, who passed away. Great fucking friend. We came up together with this rap shit, man. Um, he was also my manager. So um, he passed away a little over a year ago. So I just wanted to do some, man, to, 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 you know, celebrate the homies' names. My legacy is his legacy, man. So that's why I attached his name to it. AK's name, the real name is Jamal Pryor. But um, slow motion, that's what everybody knew him by. Volume 2, I think I might make a full-length album. But slow motion actually started, it was going into a different direction. I wanted to start slow motion with more like kind of a boom bat underground, heavy, soulful sample. That, that was the direction I was going. And so um, really that's, what, that's why I broke it up. So I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Because of the sample, you know, fucking samples. I don't know, how, how the fuck y'all niggas? Static Selector, Primo, how y'all niggas do it? I, maybe I ain't, I ain't got money like that yet. I can't afford those goddamn samples like that. So I had to, that's, and, and let me say this, any producer that ever worked with me that produced some shit for me and I didn't put it out, nine times out of ten is because they had a sample in it and the label just wouldn't let me do it because they, you know, we, you know, we balling on the budget. We can clear the samples. But slow motion was starting out in that direction. Some of the samples I couldn't clear. Then when I got a total for some of the samples, what they wanted, it just wasn't worth it. So I went back to the drawing board, used some of the songs that I had, you know, with the original, the original that was produced with all original material, and I broke it up. So I want to, I want to go back to the drawing board for Volume Two, and still, tr and still try to get that soulful element. But I might take my time, a little bit more time, and get some live instruments and shit like that, and then we go do it. So slow motion, the album is finna be even just as crazy as this fucking EP. And this EP is fucking phenomenal. But wait till the album come. It might be late summer, early fall. That's when I'm probably hitting with it. Late summer, early fall. If Pharrell call me right now and say, yo, I need you in the studio, I'm going to go in the fucking studio with Pharrell. But normally, I don't like to create in the studio, bro. I like to be isolated. When, I'm isol when I mean isolated, I mean no fucking body. Not even a producer. It has I have to be by myself with the music and I just kind of zone out whether even, even if I'm in the car sometimes I used that used to be my main source just riding around in the car and just trying to come out with shit but now I can sit in the crib and it's got to be just me no kids in the crib none of that shit bro just me isolated and I just lock in I let the beat talk to me man whatever I, whatever I feel from the beat like I'll never have a topic in my head and then kind of create from that topic I let the beat speak to me whatever the beat is saying if the beat is saying we need some crazy ass bars. I'm going with that. If the beat is saying this is more of a retrospective type of song, I let the beat talk to me and then I just get in my zone. And we normally do conference calls. Um, actually, we do do conference calls every Tuesday. And so Hop texts us after the conference call. He's like, hey, just letting y'all know I'm, I'm about to <laughs> fake leave the game. So we always like, ah, oh, here go Hop with his bullshit again. But um, he pulled it off. He fucking pulled it off. He was actually promoting his uh, upcoming project, Pound Syndrome. So uh, he pulled it off, man. And then I was in L.A. I was chilling, man. He called me. He's like, yo, I need you to get in this video with me, man. I was like, all right, cool. So I, I went and met him. We, we did it in some part. It was a park out in L.A. in Studio City we did that video in, man. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was straight bullshit. We knew we knew he was coming with it. Now, don't get us. Hey, Hop has scared the shit out of us. Like, I ain't going to say scared us, but he has <laughs> attempted to quit for real. You know, but nah, this time he was a joke. I th Hop's in a great, I think he's in a good space right now, man. So, uh, shit's about to be crazy this year. Before I was with Funk Volume, it was always the same process, or the, the, sa the same approach. And that approach was, get a fucking big record, let's take it to the radio. And when you don't do that, it gets overwhelming, because you'll start losing yourself. You'll just start trying to make songs. To, like, what song? Is this a hit? Can this go on the radio? And then at, at, you're losing yourself. You're losing. You don't know who the fuck you are. You know what I'm saying? You start. You're not even making the type of music you want to make. 
you, like I said, you lose yourself as an artist because you didn't, you're not taking that time to just build your skill or build your craft as an artist and get to know who you are and put who you are out on the fucking mute, on, on the uh, tracks. You just, you fishing for a hit. That shit get old. Because it's like, all, not, you, not, not everybody got hits. Not even no one, you ne I'd say, I always say this, you don't even know what's a fucking hit, man. Like, the dumbest shit can be a fucking hit. Like, the dumbest most effortless track can be a fucking hit. So it's like, you don't know. Um, but with Funk Volume, their approach was, you make the music you want to make. Make the music that, that you feel. And well, I'll, we're not going to concentrate on the hit. Let's concentrate on the fans. Let's concentrate on building something. And so that's always been my approach. It was just, it was just rare to meet people that uh, you can team up with and execute that. Um, and funk volume happened. Uh, they are the epitome of that. Um, even if you go to their fucking show, they're not just—it's just not talk. It's not—it's not they're just saying let's just create a fan base. You go to the fucking show. The shows are sold out. Like what the fuck? And and this is all done by everyone just doing what they want to do. Everyone just play, playing their strong part. Uh, that, you know, everyone, you know, playing their part. I'm an artist. Let me be the best artist I can be. Let me be the best Jaron Benton I can be. Let Hobson be the best Hobson. Let Dizzy be the best Dizzy. Let Swizz be the best Swizz. You know, we actually started a funk volume project, man. All of us. And uh, we start, we all was in L.A. working on it. So that was the first time all of us, even from the producers, every producer, um, we all was in a room. Me, Hop, Swizz, Diz, Kato, DJ Hopper, a couple other producers. We was all in one room. We were trying to create, but it's not where we wanted it to be. And so, and plus, all of us were still working on solo projects, so we decided, let's say everybody put our shit out, and then we'll go back to the drawing board. Like, like I say, Hop dropping some Dizzy dropping some crazy shit, Squiz got some dope shit on the work in the works. So right now, about to come out. So I'm dropping my shit. So we just we fell back and just kind of concentrate on our own shit. And then once we, I think after we, everyone gets in a good place with their own shit, we go go back to the drawing board and work on the fun volume project. When we all together, it's all fun, man. But everybody got different elements. When I kick with Dizzy, it's just pandemonium. Me and that nigga, we just get s fucking smashed. Me, him, his homie Moski, and DJ Hopper, man. We all get together, get smashed. We wild out when we hook up. Like, me, Dizzy, Hopper, Moski, when we all together, we're fucking, we're, we're drunk and stone, and we wilding out. Hop, we kicking it, having fun. Swizz, we kicking it, having some real great intellectual conversations, man. Um, so everybody got different elements, yeah, you know. Oh, you don't, yo, don't, let me say this, man. Don't let Dizzy fucking, yo, don't feel like you gotta smoke like that with Dizzy, man. He'll trick you into that shit, man, and you end up getting uncomfortable, huh? Dizzy will sit with you, he'll be like, yo, here, hit the weed, you hitting the weed. I'm a nigga, I don't, like I said, I don't smoke, though. it don't take me that much to get high. When you sit there and you try to play that goddamn back to black, blunt, blunt, blunt game with Dizzy, you can't do it, man. You're gonna end up getting fucking sick. And you go in and get too goddamn stoned to where you're uncomfortable and you you out of don't do that shit, man. Don't fall into that book. Dizzy, stop goddamn out. Stop stop smoking with these niggas, man. These niggas they ain't they, they can't smoke with you, man. Stop that shit, man. Not everybody smoke like that motherfucker. Stop trying to kill these niggas, man. What the fuck wrong with you? What we do? Gathering the juggalos, man. And I went in a Cypress Hill trailer with him. It was be real dizzy. And I was like, they was, you know, they was smoking bowls. I was like, man, I'm going to hit this shit like twice and I'm out, man. Because I knew what, if I sit this smoke with Dizzy and fucking be real, get the fuck out of here. No, nigga, stop it. No. Just make sure, just support great music, man. Slow motion EP. Uh, it's a little different from my other shit. It still has an aggressive tone, but it's more substance in the lyrics, man. Make sure you support that. The album is coming. Um, Check out my old shit too, man. My grandma's basement. All that. You can get all that on iTunes. It's also on Google Play as well. Um, or if you want hard copies, always go to myfunkvolume.com. We got hard copies. Hopson coming back out. Um, Dizzy dropping some new shit. Um, Swizz dropping some shit. Just, just continue to support our movement, man. Um, and we just go keep giving y'all quality shit. We go keep giving y'all amazing fucking shows. We always just go keep progressing as a label and as individual artist, man. So Funk Volume is the brand you should definitely stand behind. That's not like some presidential shit, didn't it? <laughs> Fuck with us, man. We ain't gonna let you down, nigga. Let's go. Just growing up in Brooklyn, one of the ways we used to stay out of trouble was by dancing. 
and it was this like Caribbean dance, like you know, called Shot to Dance and you know, Get to Mod. You feel me? That was a good era because it kept a lot of kids out of trouble. You know, even though after the era was over, a lot of them succumbed into like you know the whole gang world and just you know negative side of things. But it, it really kept us a, a good head on our shoulders for for a minute. So you know, that's just a side. A tragedy that happened today. You know, early this morning. Uh, you know, the co-founder of ASAP Worldwide, Yams, my brother, he passed away this morning. You know, um, you know, we got through it with the show and everything like that, but, you know, I'm kind of hurt still. So, yeah, that's how I'm doing. Yeah, I just want to say my condolences on behalf of myself and hot new hip-hop, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Rest in peace to ASAP Yams. Yeah. So today is the last day of the best Coast Connection tour with you, YG. Right. And um, it was like a week tour. Yep, it was like a week. It was a turned up ass week. I never even did a week tour, <laughs> so um, we made it a, a real, really good experience. And um, you know, the people came out and showed a lot of.